everyone and welcome to today's plan with me video my name is Therese and we are going to set up my May 2022 bullet journal spreads I hope you're enjoying springtime because we are doing one more spring inspired theme and this month I thought of recreating one of the first themes I've done in my very first bullet journal and that is tea time so to give you an idea, I just want to quickly show you this gem and my first tea themed cover page that I did back in July 2020. It was my second month of bullet journaling. I just drew this with my first few brush pens and I was so proud of this artwork and with the rest of this setup. Honestly, looking back at it now made me realize that I've learned a lot in this journey and how my art changed and improved ever since. So today, I'm very excited to show you my new approach or new style for this tea theme. In this setup, I'm using mainly watercolors and some gouache paints. I'm also working on my Cup of Galaxy notebook from Notebook Therapy, which is part of their tea party collection. I listed all the supplies I'm using down in the description box as well as my discount codes. Here, I already sketched out my composition, so let's start by painting this elegant and delicate teacup. I'm specifically going for an English tea time kind of theme, like an afternoon tea with some vibes of Downtown Abbey and Bridgerton if you have watched those series. My color palette is more of like a shabby chic palette, the color I chose for the upper part of the teacup is turquoise blue. You can mix blue and green, but leaning towards green. I am painting the base of the cup with the same color, and then the rest of the cup is painted with light yellow. The design that I chose for this cup has a gold rim with a wavy and flower-like shape, and instead of using gold watercolors to paint this part, we're going to paint and mimic it with our solid watercolors. So I'm using the same shade of yellow to paint the base of the rim, and then I mixed yellow ochre with a bit of brown to paint the shadows. To have a better idea where you should paint the darker areas, you can always search up a teacup with gold details for reference or if you have something like it in your home. Here we're painting the gold rim, handle, the middle, and the base of the cup. I'm also adding little ornamental details on it. Sometimes I feel like the shadows are not enough, so I tend to add more layers and that's also something I have to remind myself of when to stop adding things. But after that, we're painting the tea itself inside the cup. I saw a lot of floral teas when I was looking for inspirations. They are so pretty, so I decided to do that here. I am painting chamomile flower and some smaller pink and purple flowers and petals floating. And to make the flowers pop a little bit more, I decided to use a thin fine liner to add shadows. Then we are moving on to the saucer and teaspoon. They are also going to be gold, so we are doing the same technique as we did in the gold details of the cup. Again, you can follow this style, but you can always switch to gold watercolor or pens to make it an actual gold. And then I also painted another chamomile flower on the saucer. When using watercolors, building up your illustrations will always take time, especially if you want it to have more depth or like a three-dimensional illustration, so it also requires patience. 
I also wanted to motivate you to keep on learning with your art and remember to enjoy yourself. I'm honestly happy to show you my beginning stages of learning and how my art looks now. Improvement didn't happen overnight, so if you have any struggles, know that it is part of your progress and one day you will be proud of how far you have come. But back to the painting, I painted some branches of leaves behind and then a doily under the saucer. I'm painting the leaves that is darker towards the stem and then I'm blending it outwards so it creates a gradient. And then for the doily, I just painted it with white and outlined the shape with gray paint. We will be adding the shadows later, but for now, let's paint this monthly title. I painted a cloud-like shape and colored the edges with the same color we used for the teacup. And then I also painted a ribbon hanging under it. Inside is the word May in a script font style. I thought of using a brush pen, but I decided to use paint to write it. It can be quite challenging since the brush is flimsy, so the lettering sketch was a great guide here. And then I also outlined the letters with brown to match our T illustration. Next step, I am painting the background with a light lilac color. This time I'm using gouache. I just mixed mauve and red and lots of white. I painted the edges of the illustration first so I don't mess up and suddenly paint on them. After that, I used my small flat brush to paint the whole background. I attached some washi tapes on the sides, by the way. And as you can see, I didn't tape the whole area because we're painting this frame with an ornamental design on the corners. And that is also the last step of this cover page. Now let's work on the other side of this spread. As usual, I'm creating a quilt page here and I'm using some of these scrapbook paper sheets from Notebook Therapy's Sakura Journey collection. These are so pretty and I thought they would be a nice decoration to this month's theme. You can use my discount code CHERISE10 for 10% off on their website if you would like to get these. So I wanted to use this blue paper. I really like the texture of it. And then this pink one with subtle patterns. I hope you can see that. And then I cut the blue paper into this and fold it into an envelope. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you how I did it, but I just made sure that the size fits the page and that it has the same margins as the cover illustration. I'm using a double-sided tape to attach the sides of the envelope and then the back of it to attach on the page. I also cut this pink paper to fit inside the envelope and this is where we're going to write the quote. My quote pages are always related to my theme but I like how this one is somehow relatable. It says, Strange how tea time can both represent comforts of solitude and the pleasures of company. Actually, it's also applicable to having coffee or any beverage that we can both enjoy drinking alone and with someone else. And lastly, I wanted to add this wax seal stamp sticker design that is included in the Sakura Journey collection by Notebook Therapy but it feels bulky if I go with it, so instead I just used this sticker flake. It is transparent, so I'm sticking it on the same pink paper and cut it out. Then I'll attach the bottom half of it on this part of the envelope. And that is finally it for this whole cover spread. I hope you like how it looks, but now let's flip to the next one and set up our monthly calendar goals and focus spread.
I'm using the same font for my titles in this whole setup and it's always better for me to sketch it since I miscalculate the sizes and alignment most of the time and then I also like to use this washi tape from the washi tape shop's spring memory set by Anna of Journal Away. However, I only like to have this part because of the lace design but don't worry, I didn't throw the rest of it right away and still made use of it to create this clean brush background for the days of the week. I'm supposed to make it light by doing two strokes but my hand jerked <laughs> and brush pens like Tombow's have this streaky nature. There would be times that I like the effect but I didn't want that here so I ended up making several layers to hide it and then I used my white Uniball Signo gel pen to write the days. For the layout itself, it is very simple. Using the fine tip of the same brush pen, I drew horizontal lines and wrote the days with my Sakura Pigma Micron fine liner. On the right side is my goals and focus. It's the same layout like my previous ones. My goals section has three spaces to write my objectives as well as the efforts or the actions I need to perform to achieve each goal. And then the focus section below. Some of you asked the difference between goals and focus. I found a good definition by Peter Bregman to explain this better. He said, a goal defines an outcome you want to achieve, an area of focus establishes activities you want to spend your time doing, a goal is a result, an area of focus is a path. A goal points to the future you intend to reach, an area of focus settles you into the present. And I hope that was helpful. But onto a few more decoration on this spread. I am painting some flowers and leaves on the top left corner. There are a couple of roses here that I'm painting loosely. There are many ways to paint roses. For this one, I just started with a pigmented pink color and painted the curves in the center moving around. And then I'm building more petals with a slightly lighter color. I wanted to give more depth to it, so I'm taking a mauve color to paint the center again and just repeated the same steps for the second rose and this time I used a different shade of pink for variation. Then I surrounded them with a few more flowers and leaves. Moving on to the bottom right corner, we're painting a teapot, creamer, teacup and saucer, with a vase of flowers behind and a folded napkin underneath. Using a smaller or detailed brush for a small illustration like this always make it easier to work with. After that, we're going to paint the border, but first, I decided to paint the outer part of it with gouache in mint color. I just added white gouache to my mix for the turquoise blue. Mixing paints and finding the shades I want is always fun for me. Like I said before, it gives a lot of freedom and color selections even with just having the basic colors. When the paint is completely dry, I proceeded with painting the border and again the same ornamental design for the remaining corners. You may think that painting this border is a lot of work but I personally think that painting it with this color is brighter. I'm actually using a brush pen for this design in one of my next spreads so you can see the difference. And that is everything for this monthly spread. I really like the simple layout here. And I hope you agree with me that this color is gorgeous. 
But let's move on to set up my habit trackers. I'm sure you already imagined the work I've put into creating this from the preview. So again, this is a time-consuming habit tracker, but personally, a fun one to make. So let's get right into it. So this is an interactive concept, and before we create the trackers itself, we are painting the illustrations around the page first. This is a flat lay picture, and I started with this rose, and this time I am able to paint it with more detail and structure because it is a bigger illustration than the roses we painted loosely earlier. I started by simply painting the rose shape with a very loose approach again, and once it is dry, we are adding the shadows to define each petal. I'm using mauve again and I'm also blending the color outwards so it doesn't look harsh. Then we will paint the leaves on both sides of the rows. We are also painting a couple of loose petals here. Next is this silver tea infuser with an elegant art deco style. Beside it are some loose, dried tea leaves and flowers. Next is a purple macaron with a gold leaf garnish, which is obviously doesn't look like it. And then of course, a prepared tea on this corner. I'm using the same colors for the teacup and saucer here, and painted some flowers on top too. I darkened the inner parts of the teacup and saucer a bit for the shadows by adding multiple layers of the same color we used here. The next element is this wooden honey dipper. I just painted the base layer with yellow and then defined the shape with dark brown. Then we also have a creamer, again with the same colors used in the teacup and saucer. Lastly, we're painting a napkin under in a peachy color with lace pattern on the edges. I outlined this with a pen afterwards by the way and I wasn't able to film that part. But now let's create this tin container which will be holding the trackers. I'm using a separate watercolor paper to paint the illustration. I painted it with a combination of dusty blue and yellow, but I'm leaving this space blank for the label or the habit tracker title. I created a simple border and then moved on with writing the title and then added some floral decoration on the white spaces. I'm using an A4 watercolor paper for this, but I already cut out the illustration we just did so that this part of the paper gets a good fit on the camera frame. 
I will be showing you that later anyway. So let's paint the trackers now and these are like tea bag sachet designs. We are doing six individual designs which are assorted tea flavors. We have green tea, chamomile, mint, hibiscus, ginger and lemon, and lavender tea. Each design also has illustrations of the flavors. I measured all of this beforehand so that they all fit inside the container painting. I will be writing the habits I want to track inside the frames, then I'll just cut it all out off camera. So here they are, I cut this one with a centimeter allowance on both sides and on the bottom. We will fold these parts and attach it on the page. And here are the trackers. On the back of them, I simply drew 31 circles for the days to shade whenever I accomplish each one of these habits using a stencil. And we're just gonna insert these here and we are finally done. I know that was quite a work to create but I hope you enjoyed watching it and to balance things here I decided to go with a simple layout for the next one which is my gratitude page. I forgot to press record for this step but I just drew this border again and like I said I tried to use the fine tip of my brush pen here. Now moving on I painted a purple ribbon on top. I saw this design on a vintage afternoon tea menu and that is also the layout I'm going for. I painted the first layer first and while I waited for it to dry, I wrote the title. I changed the spelling of tea in gratitude just for fun and then I went back to the purple ribbon to add the second layer. Aside from writing what I'm grateful for, I also like to include some affirmation and highlights of the month. And that completes this whole spread. We can now move on again to the next one. I was kindly sent two sets of the Sakura Journey scrapbook papers. So I still have another pair of the designs I used for my quote page. I'm using them here and create an actual scrapbook style to cover the top and bottom part of this spread. I ripped them to create a soft and wavy edges. I attached the pink one first and then layered them with the blue paper. Now let's set up my content planner on the left side of the spread. I wrote the title again first and then a little social tracker for my YouTube channel, Instagram, and TikTok next to it. Then I'm drawing a simple calendar again and I use this to write out what I want to post and the schedule of my content this month. Next is my monthly playlist. This has no function at all and it's just for fun too. I just easily write some of the songs that are I'm either looking forward to listen to or I've been LSS or last song syndrome. And then to decorate this page, I'm using some washi tapes from the Tea Party and Sakura Journey collections by Notebook Therapy for the album covers. Then I'm using their Tuki stencil that has a tea bag shape to cut these. Okay, I'm using a lot of supplies from them obviously in this setup, but this is not sponsored. I just like to try and use them here. And please excuse my rusty X-Acto knife, by the way. After that, I just outlined the shape with my fine liner. Then I wrote the songs and artists under each washi tape. Nowadays, I've been listening to a lot of original 
Filipino or Filipino music. I recommend trying to listen to one of these songs. Even if you don't understand the lyrics, I'm sure you're going to love the vibe of them. We are doing another illustration in this spread. First, we're painting a vintage-style three-tiered cake stand. Traditionally, top tier holds sweets or pastries. The middle plate holds the scones, jam, butter, and cream. And then the lowest tier is for savory foods such as sandwiches. Honestly, these small dishes are quite difficult to paint, but I hope they look like food in your eyes. <laughs> Kidding aside, I am painting another teapot, sugar bowl, and teacup. And to complete this painting is a round table and the shadows of the stuff on top of it. And that is finally my content planner and playlist spread. We have one more spread to make in this video and that is my weekly spreads for the first two weeks of May. I started by cutting a horizontal Dutch door here and then let's create a simple layout. I'm using this brush pen again for the background of the days. I am supposed to draw boxes for the dailies but I decided to just outline the border of the titles to make it different from the weeklies I've done so far this year. Then I'm writing what week it is so we're doing week 18 and 19 here. On top of this spread is an illustration of a cupboard with tea sets and flower vases. It will look more like a display, so there are tea napkins, porcelain teapots, hanging teacups, saucers, plates, tea containers, and sugar bowl surrounded with pink and yellow flowers. Again, since the elements are small, I'm not trying to make it very detailed, but in the end, I just used a thin fine liner to draw the structures of each element. As we progress in this painting, I hope you don't mind some quiet moments. At some point in my plan with me videos, I tend to get fewer explanations for my weekly spreads, and I'm really sorry for that. But here's a relaxing music in the background so you can enjoy them as we complete this painting.
I also painted some more flowers, petals, and leaves on the surface. I painted the background with gray and to make it look a little bit more lively, I added a hint of green and just blended it upwards. But that is everything for my first two weekly spreads and my initial setup for this month. So let's quickly flip through all the spreads we made for my May 2022 bullet journal. I really hope you enjoyed watching this plan with me video. Creating another version of this theme actually feels nostalgic. Let me know if you have seen my old themes and if you would be interested to see me recreating them in the future. And if you're new here, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss my upcoming videos. Thank you all so much for watching, have a lovely month of May, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone!